Hey everyone, it's Pacific. Uh, again, not too much to talk about this week. Um, I have some really, really cool, exciting things to talk about so very soon, but not yet. Um, in the meantime, uh, postcard designs are done. Uh, I've posted them on our Twitter and on our Facebook and on our Patreon. Uh, the poll is public so anyone can vote. Uh, and if you're interested in doing that and checking out the designs, visit patreon.com slash scp underscore pod. We have some pretty cool designs. Uh, one is kind of a cute 50s looking postcard about going to space. Uh, one is for last week's episode, Marshall Carter and Dark. Uh, and the third, and right now the winner, or the one in lead, is uh, a Lord Blackwood design uh, that I did a while back. Um, they're really cool. I'm excited to see what you guys will choose. So, uh, yeah, go check it out. If you're interested in getting a postcard, uh, go ahead and join our Patreon. All of our patrons at $5 or above are getting a postcard. So make sure you sign up and vote now. Otherwise, I want to give a huge shout out to this week's new patrons. Uh, and that means you, Marcus Noble, Amy Packard, Tanisha McCain, Johnny Tran, Jonathan Thornton, Joysticks Reviews and Gaming, Pitt Kunz, Chaz Gabriel, Totally Not SCP 682, Jasper Curry, and Call Me Lost. Also, we have a very important message from one of our ACAST supporters. Uh, so from Swift Paw Beer Dragon. To all my Magic City furs, this pandemic will be over soon and we can all go bowling and fursuit again. Love you all. Hope you guys enjoy bowling, well, you know, once everything opens up. Uh, but yeah, stay safe and stay connected. Say hi to your friends. Without further ado, this week's episode. Warning. The Foundation database is classified. Unauthorized access will result in detainment. Within this archive, you'll find the procedures, descriptions, and accounts of the most notorious anomalies we've encountered to date. Secure. Contain. Protect. Item number. SCP-2264. Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Due to the unavoidably public nature of the building housing SCP-2264-A, security measures are to focus on preventing civilian access to the anomaly's entrance. The Foundation is to cooperate with the Government of the United Kingdom in concealing the existence of SCP-2264-A. A hidden passage to SCP-2264-A has been constructed and remains its only means of access. The original entrance to the room where SCP-2264-A is located has been walled over, ensuring that only authorized personnel have access to SCP-2264-A. Operatives are to be reassigned and replaced monthly due to the threat of psychological addiction to SCP-2264-B. Description SCP-2264-A is a door composed of iron, located within the hidden chamber beneath Martin Tower, a part of the Tower of London. The gateway cannot be unlocked through traditional means, requiring a highly ritualized process. Attached to SCP-2264-A is a complex apparatus, composed of alchemical tools such as alembics, retorts, and a crucible. Based on journals found within the hidden chamber, SCP-2264-A is presumably the creation of Henry Percy, 9th Earl of Northumberland, an English aristocrat, alchemist, and long-term prisoner within the Tower of London. Despite his incarcerated status, the Earl maintained a degree of influence, said to enjoy a comfortable lifestyle and allowed access to books and research material. He was known as a Wizard Earl due to his extensive library and interest in the scientific and occult. It is considered possible that others within Percy's circle of associates were involved in the creation of SCP-2264-A, including John D., famed alchemist and court astrologer of Queen Elizabeth, the School of Knights, of which Henry Percy was supposedly a member to, may have also had involvement. Journal of Henry Percy, the Wizard Earl. Negredo. We will confront the dark night of the soul. The pineal gland will be freshly extracted. Fire evokes the shadow within. 
Albedo. Wash aroint the impurities. Rain cleanses all sin and prepares the soul for Elysium. Divide, not as dictated by the rigours of harmony, but rather into two opposing principles, to be later coagulated to form a unity of opposites. Citrinitas. Victory coincides with the yellowing of the lunar consciousness. The white surrenders to dawn. The travelling lamp slays the moon. Rubedo. Red alludes. Instead, surrender upon the apparatus a sanguine sacrifice. A foundation alchemist was consulted. The instructions are roughly comparable with the magnum opus, a four-part process employed in the creation of the mythical philosopher's stone. Replication of this process requires, through still undetermined means, a mechanism within SCP-2264-A responds to the completed solution, causing it to unlock and open, allowing access to SCP-2264-B. SCP-2264-B is an extra-dimensional city which does not correspond to any known locations, earthly or otherwise. Objects that originate from within SCP-2264-B will dematerialize if brought through SCP-2264-A. Such objects have been later found returned to the site of their initial removal. Those who enter SCP-2264-B report having all personal belongings removed and their clothes replaced. Manifested outfits are said to resemble those worn at a masquerade ball, most especially those associated with the Carnival of Venice, and will dematerialize upon exit of SCP-2264-B. Masks cannot be removed while inside of SCP-2264-B, but the rest of the attire can be discarded if one chooses to do so. The majority of SCP-2264-B inhabitants are dressed and adorned in a similar fashion. Agents have reported a somewhat organic quality to their costumes, frequently describing it as chitinous. The most common inhabitants of SCP-2264-B are roughly humanoid and have since been classified as SCP-2264-1. The sky has been described as yellow and containing an indeterminate number of stars, corresponding with no known or even hypothesized constellations. Buildings are shaped in such a manner as to suggest them to be carved from a single seamless material. Black, white, yellow, and red are the only colors to reportedly occur within SCP-2264-B. Architecture is non-Euclidean, and normal laws of gravity do not apply. Thus, inhabitants can be observed as climbing a stairway upside down, but based on their own gravity source, they are climbing normally. The city has been described as having an odor of dried flowers, with a hint of mold or a scent not unlike that of old books. The actual size of the city has been difficult to measure, but it appears to be located on an island, surrounded by a black ocean. The composition of the liquid is unknown, but described as appearing more viscous than water. Operatives have reported a hypnagogic malaise while exploring SCP-2264-B, with difficulty estimating time and space. Although SCP-2264-B is a tangible location, and not considered to be an actual dream, those who have had a history of lucid dreaming have shown far greater self-control and attention to detail than those who do not. Operatives are to be reassigned and replaced monthly due to the threat of psychological addiction to SCP-2264-B. Initial efforts at exploration resulted in eight AWOL operatives, with those that returned having difficulty describing what they had observed in a coherent and or detailed manner. Exploration Report August 4th, 2014 Dr. Calixo Neveres, First Deployment The almost hypnagogic nature of SCP-2264-B has led many to observe it as a dream or hallucination, failing to fully recognize its inherent verisimilitude. A lucid dreamer and an experienced user of hallucinogenics, I, Dr. Calixto Narvaez, was well chosen for this mission. My comrades quickly surrendered to the anomaly, engaging in the decadent pleasures of the city, most especially within the palace. Tempting as it was, I did not join the others in their rapturous orgy. I would suggest interviewing those that previously entered SCP-2264-B again, 
It is unlikely they've gone into all the details. When allowed a chance to directly control a dream, so many claim they would fly or visit the stars. Those people are liars. Most choose to surrender to the ecstatic delirium of sexual pleasure. Again, this is not a dream, but I am unable to understand why most are unable to perceive the difference. I am reminded of the legend of the assassins, how their leader supposedly drugged and led his recruits into his castle. Within was a pleasure garden that rivaled any imagined paradise. The individuals truly believed they were offered a taste of the divine. SCP-2264-B works in a somewhat similar way, but I do not believe that is the reason for its splendor. I doubt it is intended to be a trap. It is simply a city, although certainly a majestic city, unlike anything I had ever before encountered. But one that happens to exist outside the baseline reality, and does not entirely conform to the physical rules we are used to. I have made significant discoveries while exploring SCP-2264-B. 1. Universal translation of language. While most of the agents perceive the inhabitants as speaking English, I heard them in my native tongue of Spanish. Even those of my team, when communicating with me directly, appeared to have been speaking Spanish while within the anomaly. I have discovered that this is also applied to written language, but not quite as accurately. Written words initially appear as alien shapes. Most of the symbols have a somewhat spiral-like pattern. If one continues to directly observe the symbols, they will begin to blur and alter until some level of translation has manifested. However, there do appear to be limitations, and it seems that some words native to SCP-2264-B have no equivalent in any human language. The words appear to move on paper, and prolonged exposure can easily result in nausea and headache. 2. The true name of SCP-2264-B is Alagada, a city-state said to border the Nevermint. I was able to gather much of this information from the Wandsmen of Kulmanas, a scholar and foreigner like myself. They wore a beaked mask, and exquisite robes cloaked their hunchbacked form. Their hands were scaly, more avian than reptilian, with black talons. They unfurled a scroll before me, said it was a map of the multiverse. Layer after layer of endless spirals. I sense an oncoming migraine just thinking about it now. Regardless, I was pleased to meet a fellow intellectual within. I asked them about the nature of their research. What is the nature of all that is? They asked. I assumed rhetorically. Just for a start, they noted. 3. There is a specific power structure within SCP-2264-B involving entities that, based on description, could easily be considered some of the more dangerous reality benders known to the Foundation. The Wandsman of Kulmanis warned of individuals that should not even be approached, lest we draw undesirable attention to our reality. There are, or were, four masked lords who directly oversee SCP-2264-B. The Black Lord, wearer of the Anguished Mask. The White Lord, wearer of the Diligent Mask. The Yellow Lord, wearer of the Odious Mask. The Red Lord, wearer of the Mirthful Mask. They were said to be the chief advisors to the King of Alagada. They continued to warn that I not be fooled by their names, each just as terrible as the other. I have seen the Masked Lords, always at a distance, all except the wearer of the Anguished Mask. I was informed that the Black Lord was the victim of a political struggle some time ago, the reason never known, if reason existed at all, and cast into some dreadful dimensional backwater. It would only be a matter of time before they returned. The insidious glamour of the city-state disguises a dreadful truth, one the Wandsman had difficulty expressing in words. They stated that most outsiders came to this place to seek a boon from the King. They refused to speak any more of this entity, and suggested I avoid the Ambassador of the Alagada as well, before politely taking their leave of me. I decided it time to report back, gathered the others, pulling a few from the writhing mound of masked tridimensional entities. The first door we entered was the one to return us to baseline reality. 
I suspect that SCP-2264-B is a dimensional nexus connected to countless worlds across the multiverse. Every door used within SCP-2264-B has connected directly to SCP-2264-A. If there are other gateways, like SCP-2264-A, I suspect them to be currently sealed. Hey everyone, it's Specific, here with a quick ad break. Alright, that's it. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. Dr. Calixto Nevarez was commended for his initiative. A psychological evaluation has determined it safe for him to re-enter in the near future. Although, it has been requested that he uses a more professional tone with regards to his reports. Future operatives will be screened for higher than normal levels of activity in the parietal lobes, while in a state of altered consciousness, sleep or otherwise. The Wandsmen of Kol Manas have since been classified as SCP-2264-2 and is considered an invaluable source of information. The Masked Lords of Alagata have been classified as SCP-2264-3. Exploration Reports August 7, 2014. Dr. Calixto Neveres, second deployment. I believe SCP-2264-2 is the only entity we might truly trust in Alagada and sought them immediately. The city contains thousands, if not millions, but SCP-2264-2 stands out and appears to have a strictly scholarly interest in SCP-2264-B most especially the palace library. The collection was impressive and could have been infinite in size for all I knew. There was no visible end to the room, the corridor stretching long into the horizon. I wandered the seemingly endless hall, Agent Cromwell and Dr. Yu at my side, in search of SCP-22642. I scanned through a few grimoires and scrolls, the alien symbols failing to translate leading me to suspect that no earthly translation was possible. In time we found SCP-22642, affable as before and expressing concern about our well-being. I asked that they elaborate, and I write their response as best as my memory allows. The Ambassador of Alagada will soon return from Aditum, and only the Mad shall remain. I suggest you leave post-haste, for I intend the same. I thanked them for their warning, and declared that we would not linger for long. I asked them about Aditum. They replied, A terrible city, filled with equally terrible people. It is said that the Grand Carcist of Aditum serves the designs of an elder being, a horror thought to rival even the Hanged King of Alagata, Craw. SCP-22642 made a sound not unlike a crow. I should not speak of them, not here. I asked about who they were, SCP-22642, wanting to know more about them. They replied, I am the Wandsman of Kul Manas, a scholar, as you undoubtedly know. I am a walker of the astral plane, a sailor of the celestial sea, and a spelunker of the planar deep. SCP-22642 noted something about our aura declaring it rare across the multiverse, but admitted to having encountered similar during previous visits to SCP-2264-B. They said something along the lines of, The deathless merchant of London, driven by greed and black ambition. There was another, a stranger in a strange land. It appeared as though they did not know where they were, smelling of fear. I cannot imagine how one might accidentally stumble upon Alagada. I did not believe such a thing was possible. They vanished soon after, yet I never witnessed them leave. Simply gone in a blink. They would continue to reference the Carcists and Clavagers of Aditum, stating that they reeked of decay and embryonic fluid. That was the extent of people encountered with a similar aura to our own. I suspect SCP-22642 is able to sense a person's dimensional neighborhood. SCP-22642 turned their head completely around, somewhat like an owl, and called, declaring, I sense the ambassador of Alagada has returned. I take my leave of this place, and I suggest you do the same. Flee. Do not delay. Perhaps I will pay your realm a visit in the future. 
SCP-22642 exited the nearest door. The door refused to budge, but I suspected it connected SCP-22642 to their native dimension. We exited the library, walking quickly, not wishing to bring too much attention upon ourselves by running. We found an unlocked door and returned home. We never saw the Ambassador or their King, but I feel it best that we not seek them out. Although not directly encountered, the Ambassador of Alagata and the King of Alagata have been respectively classified as SCP-22644 and SCP-22645. The following information is restricted to level 4 personnel or above. The O5 Council voted 10-3 in support of sending Mobile Task Force Psi-9, Abyss Gazers, into SCP-2264-B. The goal of the operation was to locate SCP-2264-4 and SCP-2264-5 and calculate the level of threats they represent to humanity, Earth, and the local dimensional space. Twelve agents trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat and counter-occult stratagems, entered SCP-2264-A on August 16, 2014, at 0800 hours. One agent returned alive. The rest are presumed dead or otherwise irretrievable. Interviewed, Agent Alexander Papadopoulos. Interviewer, Dr. Laxmi Norong. Forward, Agent Papadopoulos was found to be in critical condition upon their exit of SCP-2264, losing consciousness soon afterwards. A physical examination revealed fractured bones throughout the entirety of their body and extensive internal bleeding. After three weeks of hospitalization, Agent Papadopoulos was deemed healthy enough for interview. Begin log. I know it might be difficult, but please tell me what you are able to remember. The city was remarkable. Command prepped us for it as best they could, but words failed to do it justice. We had all the appearance of harlequins or something out of a 17th century masquerade. It wasn't exactly the same, but close enough. Couldn't take the masks off hard as we tried. We had a mission to complete, but the details were quite vague. Vague? Find SCP-2264-4 and Dash 5. Get an estimate on their threat level. We knew they were important to SCP-2264, but we had no idea what they looked like or even how to locate them. Go on. Right. Well, we found the palace. Don't know how long it took. Time was kind of impossible to tell in that place. The city is full of people, especially that place, but it didn't feel like being in a busy city in our world. There was something different about it, and I don't know how else to describe it. Not important, I guess. Things blurred out a lot. Everything seemed to follow a sort of dream logic. Dream logic? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a dream, I'm certain of that, and I have all the scars to prove it. It was all real, but have you ever noticed how dreams rush through the details? You end up in one place, but you don't really recall how. It was kind of like that. I remember the masquerade, the music and the dancing, oh, and the fucking. Still adorned with their mask. Seeing some of them nude made us aware of just how much was an elaborate costume. Their skin was like porcelain. You could sort of tell that those were the natives. You know, SCP-2264-1, but the more you stared, the less human everyone seemed. Some had too many limbs, and some had too few, like snake people. It was similar to monsters in an old fantasy comic I read as a kid. <laughs> Sorry, rambling. Head hurts trying to remember. I can't move with my arms or legs. What's wrong with them? The numbness is just a side effect of your medication. Please focus on my questions. 
Okay, if you say so. I remember having to pull Agent Mayhair away from some woman. Wasn't attacking him, quite the opposite. Couldn't blame him. She had curves in all the right places. Made it easy to ignore the tentacles. So the twelve of us stick together. Hard not to look like you're out for trouble with that many. Anyway, we wandered about the palace and it was like a labyrinth. I honestly wouldn't have been surprised if we walked into a minotaur or something. We spent most of the time descending the stairs, I think. <clears throat> I remember the feeling like we were traveling deeper and deeper. And then, somehow, just when we thought we'd reached the bottom, we were back outside. It looked like we were in exactly the same spot as when we entered SCP-2264-B. Hell, we could all see the palace in the distance, but something was different. Everything was dark, drained of color. Like, we could see it all, but it was a hazy gray twilight. The streets were empty and the buildings looked ruined. Yeah, it was like the whole city was abandoned long ago, desolate and silent, not a sound but our own footsteps. We entered this iteration of the palace. Everything was identical, architecturally speaking. That was when we started to hear the whispers. It spoke in a language I'd never heard before. I could feel it slithering into my ear, penetrating my brain. Wait. He hesitates. His eyes grow damp with tears. Please continue. We destroyed ourselves. What? We, we didn't want to, but we had no choice. The ambassador of Alagada. It found us. It didn't have a face. No mouth, nose, or eyes. I thought it was wearing a skin-tight outfit and high heels. That's what it looked like at first, but no. That was its body. Its flesh was black. It stood tall, lithe, and androgynous, and so... Please, this information is important. Pace yourself. We can stop it. It stood so damn proud, just radiating arrogance. I couldn't understand a word it said, and yet every syllable dripped with narcissistic venom. It brought a hand to where a mouth should have been, and it laughed, and it laughed, and we, we destroyed ourselves for its amusement. Bones were shattered, flesh and organs ruptured. All for its amusement. We ruined ourselves in body and mind. And the whole time, we screamed and begged, yet only silence parted our lips. I'm so sorry. I, I, tried to, I tried to say I'm so sorry. Their eyes pleaded for mercy and asked for forgiveness. In the end, I was the only one left alive surrounded by the corpses of my ravished friends and comrades. I understand now. The ambassador needed a witness, one to deliver its message, to tell you this, and... He pauses, begins to hyperventilate. Please continue. I watched the ceiling move as it dragged my broken body from room to room. Eventually, we stopped and it lifted me into the air, held me up before the throne. There, I saw the king. It was anchored in place, hallowed bonds around its corpse-like hands and throat, its face hidden beneath the veil. Impish creatures crawled all over it, caressing its twitching body as if intending comfort, while others pulled the tethers even tighter. The king trembled and quivered, and I saw pale tendrils slither in and out of its tattered robes. I looked on as the veil was lifted. I wanted to die. I can't live with what I've done. Please kill me. In this, I can't feel my legs. I can't feel my arms. Not like this. Not like this. Please, I'm begging you. You know I'm not allowed to do anything of the sort. Please tell me what you saw. A god-shaped hole. The barren desolation of a fallen and failed creation. You 
you see the light of long dead stars. Your existence is nothing but an echo of a dying god's screams. The unseen converges, surrounds you, and it tightens like a noose. End log. Operations involving SCP-2264 are suspended until further notice. The agent's request for termination has been denied. Due to the considerable damage suffered, amputation of both arms and legs was deemed necessary. The subject is no longer able to perform most biological functions without the aid of life support systems. He is to be restrained for his own protection, despite his loss of limbs, suicide attempts have been made, and thoroughly interrogated for all possible information related to SCP-2264. Due to his contact with SCP-2264-4 and SCP-2264-5, he is to be quarantined and carefully observed for signs of anomaly. Agent Papadopoulos has refused food and water, requiring the use of a feeding tube. Addendum. SCP-2264 was discovered accidentally during the refurbishment of Martin Tower on June 1, 2014. The Foundation was contacted by representatives of the Crown due to the suspicion of a potentially anomalous artifact based on the writings found within, since attributed to Henry Percy, 9th Earl of Northern Berland. Discovered among his notes was an unsent letter, intended to be received by Christopher Marlowe, famed poet and playwright. The letter is dated 30th of May, 1593, the day of Christopher Marlowe's unsolved murder. Document 2264-0037 To my singular good friend, may this missive reach thee ere tis too late. T'was thou who urged against my building of the Janus Gate. My insult was cruel, having deemed thee foolish and ignorant of the sciences. I prithee, Forgive mine arrogance. T'was thou who suffered the evil to which I was blind. I showed thee the other ordinary, and allowed the secret darkness to coil around the cinder of thy beautiful heart. I was blind, but now I see. I beseech thee to burn that accursed play and return it to ash. Thy patron seeks to corrupt and defile. Whence he cometh, there are things that simply should not be. The ambassador shall exploit thee as they did us. I have sealed the Janus gate so that only the enlightened may enter. May they have the wisdom to see what I could not, and the power to slay the wretched king within. Damn that metropolis of blood, that terrible realm and its ancient countless crimes. Consign thy play to the fire, deny thy vile patron, and aroint thee from this madness. We would fain welcome thee back into the night. SCP-2264 was written by Metaphysician. Our host is John Grills. This week's narrator was Pacific S. Obadiah. Henry Percy was played by Karim Cronfley. Dr. Calixto Neveres was played by Graham Rowett. Dr. Lancy Narong was played by Nicole Goodnight. Agent Alex Papadopoulos was played by Chris Hemphill. Our music is made by the incredible Tom Rory Parsons. And I'm your showrunner and sound designer, Pacific S. Obadiah. Our producer is Tom Owen. And this is a bloody disgusting podcast. For more information, visit bloody-disgusting.com.